Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again today. I am Trace, and this is episode two of five in our series on fire. It might seem like a simple topic, but there is a lot here. Yesterday we talked a bit about what fire is exactly. Today we're gonna talk a bit about how it became a possibility on our planet, because it wasn't always a thing here on Earth. We're also gonna talk about cooking and burns and firefighting and all sorts of cool stuff, so make sure you subscribe for all of that. But where did fire come from? You know, when was the first fire? Fire didn't always exist here on planet Earth. I know that might come as a shock to some of you, but seriously, there was a time in history that fire was actually an impossibility. Because remember the fire triangle, fuel, oxygen, and heat. You need those three things in order to make fire. And there was a time when Earth didn't have oxygen in the atmosphere. So without oxygen, no fire. 2.3 billion years ago, the Great Oxygenation Event happened. Once the Great Oxygenation Event happened, we had oxygen, but we still didn't have fire. Yeah, not quite yet. There was still no fuel for the fire to burn. The earliest source of fuel would likely be plants. The intersection of oxygen getting to a level on Earth to sustain fire and also plants that was about 400 to 450 million years ago. Not that long in the grand scheme of Earth's history, right? The earliest evidence of fire came in the form of charcoal, specifically the oldest piece of fossil charcoal that we've ever found, which is, of course, the earliest byproduct of fire ever found, the earliest evidence of fire on our planet. It may have existed before this, but we know that in about 416 million, 358 million years ago, in the late Devonian period, charcoal was discovered. Well, we discovered it later, but that's when it burned. It was a time when forests were spreading across the earth, and thus fire could happen, because there was wood, there was heat, and there was oxygen. Heat, of course, had been around on earth for a long time. We'd been bombarded by things from space during the formation of the early solar system. The sun had been around for a long time before the planet even formed. So we had a lot of heat around, but it was more of a smoldering magma, you know, kind of heat than it was flames and burning kind of heat. So now that we're in the age of fire, you know, 400 million years ago, fire can exist. But when do we get a hold of it? When do humans and our ancestors get to kind of take it and use it, right? There's no one agreed upon theory of when man cultivated fire. So far, the earliest evidence of human controlled fire was found in the Wonderwork Cave in South Africa. It's one of actually the oldest known human habitation sites. And they think that this is about a million years old. So maybe we had fire a million years ago. Scientists dug up soil from inside the cave and after looking at samples under a microscope, they found ash inside of this cave, specifically carbonized pieces of leaf and twigs, and also bits of animal bone. They concluded that since no wind or rain had affected the ash inside of this cave, the fire must have been made in that cave, which would rule out a forest fire coming through the area or lightning. They also performed a test called the Furrier Transform Infrared Microspectroscopy, which measured how the materials absorbed infrared waves. They measured essentially how hot something got. And they use it today in crime labs to find traces of drugs and things. But the test on this ash showed that the material in the cave had been heated to between 750 and 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. And that lines up with a twig slash grass campfire. But I know what y'all must be thinking now. We've got caves, we've got fire. Obviously you're thinking about bat poop, right? Because doesn't rotting bat guano sometimes become hot enough to spontaneously combust? Yeah! Yeah, it does. No one was thinking that? Just me? Cool. Scientists were also thinking that, so they checked, and no, bat poop did not start this fire. Best guess is that it must have been Homo erectus. Homo erectus lived in that cave maybe a million years ago and used some sort of fire. That's pretty old. Does that mean that humans started using fire a million years ago? Not necessarily. Yes, they found in the Wonderwork cave this ash, and this is a best guess based on that ash but we're still not 100% sure that humans were the ones who made this fire. Even if they did, it doesn't mean that humans had tamed that fire. For example, the oldest suspected remains of human-made fire were found in Kenya, dating back 1.6 million years, but there's no way to tell if those were 
controlled by humans, as in we didn't like control that fire. We didn't have it in a fire pit. They could have been from lightning, could have been from forest fires, could have been from a volcanic eruption. We're not really sure. The best evidence that we know of, of the first controlled fire, as in we started it, we kept it somewhere, and we used it. We harnessed the power of this fire. It was in a place in Israel called the Gesher Benot Ya'akov. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, obviously. That that has evidence of human-controlled fire. There's evidence of burnt wood, seeds, and of course flint, which you can use to start fires. And in this is in a specific small places spread over a large area, which might show that humans were making their own fires around 790,000 years ago. That's, you know, without a doubt, we can probably say those things. And some say that these findings are traces of hearths. And hearths are the ultimate in controlling fire. That a hearth is, you know, where you cook, where you gather in your house. It's the fireplace, essentially. But prior to having a stove and an electric stove or a gas stove, you would cook over the hearth as well. So it was the center of the house. Other researchers date the first hearths back to another place in Israel, the Kesem Cave. 300,000 years ago, there was somebody potentially in that cave using a fire that left behind wood ash heated to a temperature that could only have come from a hearth. The University of Colorado Museum in Boulder found evidence of ancient fireplaces in England from 400,000 years ago and in Spain from 228,000 years ago, where early men were cooking rabbits and tortoises and small animals. They know it was a hearth because there were layers of ash, one after another. That showed that the fire was being lit again and again and reused, showing that we knew how to control fire and keep it in a specific place. So we know 228,000 years ago, at least, maybe as far back as 800,000 years. Pretty cool. Even though the science world is not 100% sure where the first controlled human fire was, we do know they definitely started using it to cook or warm themselves. We know it was a long time ago, and we know it was really important. Why? The cooking hypothesis. Primatologist Richard Wrangham says that ape ancestors first discovered how to harness fire. And eventually, those evolved into the earliest humans. So think Homo habilis into Homo erectus. Fire would help fend off creatures at night, provide light, changing us so that we didn't have to rely on the sun for our light. It also meant that these ancient human ancestors could stop living in trees. They could come down from the trees and live on the ground or sheltered in caves. And more importantly, when you cook food, you break down the proteins in it. Think of it this way. If you have to spend your whole day chewing food, you can't really go out and invent the wheel. When you cook it, even a little bit, barley, rye, grains, those provide large amounts of energy with a low amount of digestibility. We're kind of pre-digesting these things. Basically, the cooking hypothesis says that because we had this extra energy, because we were pre-digesting our food, our bodies could evolve to grow bigger brains, allowing us to become the humans that you see today clicking away on the internet. And even though this is just a theory, and we don't know if it's 100% true, it's very compelling, and it might be one of the reasons fire helped early humans become us. Why don't you tell us down in the comments how you think early humans used fires? But now that we're modern humans, we can't just use fire, we gotta analyze it and break it down. So let's talk a bit about the chemistry of fire tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe for that. Also, come find us over on Twitter. You can find the show at TestTube. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for watching.